Thank you for joining us today to learn about macroinvertebrate identification with Durham Soil and Water and the NC Envirophon. Aquatic macroinvertebrates, also called benthic macroinvertebrates, are small aquatic animals in the aquatic larval stages of insects. They include dragonfly, stonefly larvae, snails, worms, beetles, crayfish, and more. They lack a backbone, are visible without the aid of a microscope, and are found in and around water bodies during some period of their lives. Benthic macroinvertebrates are often found attached to rocks, vegetation, logs, and sticks, or burrowed into the bottom of sand and sediment. Some are highly sensitive to pollution, whereas others have a high tolerance for polluted waters. Because of this variability in sensitivity to pollution, macroinvertebrates make good biological indicators. By sampling macroinvertebrate communities and looking at both the types and numbers of animals present, we can assess the health of our bodies of water. We can break macroinvertebrates up into three taxa groups, group one being sensitive organisms or pollution sensitive or intolerant organisms. Their dominance typically indicates good water quality. In group two, we have moderately sensitive organisms. Moderately pollution tolerant organisms found, are found in a wide range of water quality conditions. And then we have group three, tolerant organisms, highly pollution tolerant organisms. They can be found in any quality of water, but their dominance typically indicates poor water quality. To help you remember which macroinvertebrates belong to which group, we've, helped, we've come up with a mnemonic device for group one. Fiona's really scary cousin Diane gives me fierce wedgies. Fresh water mussels, riffle beetles, stoneflies, caddisflies, dobsonfly, the gilled snail, mayfly, fishfly, and waterpenny all belong to group one. Fresh water mussels. Freshwater mussels bury themselves in the mud and filter feed on particles in the water. They are dependent on detris for their food supply and can be found in the benthic zone. Riffle beetles, these are small aquatic beetles that are most often found crawling on stones and other solid debris in fast-moving stream. A few species are found in slow streams or still water. They have relatively long legs and both the larvae and adults are fully aquatic, extracting oxygen from the water around them. Stonefly nymphs. They have two hair-like tails, six jointed legs, and two hooked tips each with big antennas and no gills on the lower half of their body. Stonefly nymphs, like several other insects, have adapted a streamlined body that will offer them less resistance to the swift current. This is because stonefly nymphs have fixed gills that can only extract oxygen in moving water. If they're trapped in still water for an extended period of time, they'll die relatively quickly. Caddisflies. Six jointed, hooked legs just behind the head, two hooks at the back end, maybe in a case made of stones, leaves, or sticks. The Dobson fly larva, aka Helgramites. They have a dark body with six jointed legs, large pinching claws, may, many pointed feelers along the edge of the body, two small hooks at the back end, feathery tufts of gills along the side of the body, and they live clinging to the rocks of riffling waters. The adult gilled snail. They use gills to obtain oxygen while living in water, and their shells typically open to the right. Mayfly nymphs have plate-like or feathery gills on the sides of their lower body and three or sometimes two long hair-like tails. Fishfly larvae resemble helgramites but are smaller and have no gill tufts. And the waterpenny larva, shaped like a tiny gray oblong frisbee, six tiny legs on the bottom, and they're slow crawlers. For group 2 macroinvertebrates, we've come up with another mnemonic device to help you remember. Silly wrestlers worship cheerleaders. So we celebrated with Dunkin' Donuts Friday. This represents scud, water beetles, whirligig beetles, crane flies, sow bugs, 
water striders, crayfish, water scorpions, damselflies, dragonflies, and the fingernail clam. Scuds, they have bodies higher than they are wide, they have shrimp-like appearance, and they can be white to a gray color. It swims laying on its side, and it has more than six legs. Water beetles are light-colored with six legs on the upper half of their body, strong jaws and short antenna, and their body is smooth or with hair-like projections or knobs. The whirligig beetle. These whirligig beetles have short, fan-shaped middle and hind legs, front legs are long and slender, and they float on the surface. Crane fly larvae are four finger-like lobes at the back end, no legs, milky green to light brown, and caterpillar-like segmented bodies. The sow bug has an oblong body, it is wider than it is high, it's gray in color, and it has more than six legs with a long antenna. They can look similar to pill bugs, but cannot roll into the same protective ball. Water striders, like their name suggests, have long slender legs and they're a surface film dweller. The water strider distributes its weight across a wide area with its long sprawling legs. The tip of its legs are fringed with waxy hairs to repel the water and movement is key for the water strider to stay afloat. Crayfish. Crayfish are lobster-like with eight walking legs and two pinching claws. Turn over a rock in almost any North Carolina stream in the summer, and the chances are a crayfish will dart backwards away from you or even defend the rock with its claws pointed at you. There are at least 40 different species of this common freshwater crustacean that live in North Carolina streams, ponds, and burrows from the mountains to the coast. Many of these species are found nowhere else on Earth. The Adult Water Scorpion also have slender, long legs, but two long grooved filaments for breathing underwater. They can look similar to the water strider, but has additional appendage on its rear. The damselfly nymph has a body ending in three oblong fan-like plates. It has six thin hooked legs, and it has smooth tapered sides of the body. The dragonfly nymph has large eyes, a wide oval to round abdomen, and six hooked legs. Dragonfly nymphs live clinging to the rocks in riffling waters. And the fingernail clam has two hinged shells that are thin and fragile and hinged towards the middle. The adults can be two to two and a half centimeters or smaller. And finally, we have a mnemonic device to help you remember the macroinvertebrates that are a part of group three. Five odd muscular bodyguards hugged little rare porcelain dolls. This mnemonic device covers all three types of worms, midge flies, black flies, horse flies, leeches, pouch snails, and drone flies. Flatworms. They have a flat body, a blunt head, and no segments or bristles. They're typically a gray to brown or palish color, and they glide smoothly, not wiggling, and they are carnivores or scavengers. Oligocata worms have segmented bodies with thin bristles. They have round cross sections and are th like thin earthworms with a red to pink to dark color. They move by contracting and extending, or by wriggling. They're burrowing scavengers and they have tubeflex common genius, head in the mud, and tails waving. The midge fly larvae have dark heads or are worm-like segmented body and two thin tiny legs on each side. Black fly larvae have one end of their body that is wider than the other, a black head, and a suction pad on the end. Black fly larvae attach to rocks by tiny hooks and they secrete a silken line in case they are swept off. 
They have a fan-like structure on their head to strain food morsels from the passing water. Horsefly larva are robust and worm-like, one inch in length or longer, and they are tapered at both ends. The adult leech is brown, gray, or patterned in body. The body ends with a suction pad. It's flattened and segmented like a worm. And carnivores, it is a carnivore or a parasite and moves like an inchworm by contracting and extending its body. Roundworms are slender and pale in color, pointed at both ends and move by wriggling, but they do not contract. There are no segments or bristles. They are scavengers or parasites, and most of them are less than one centimeter long. Adult pouch snails. They breathe air, so they don't have gills, and their shell typically opens to the left, but some of the species open to the right. But I promise you that this is not a trick question. If it opens on the left, it is most likely a pouch snail. Drone fly larva, aka the rat-tailed maggot, has a distinctive tube at the end, which it breathes through, and the tube is up to one inch long. And those are all of the macroinvertebrates that you're responsible for knowing for the Envirothon and for the area Envirothon with Durham soil and water. We appreciate you taking the time to review with us today.